Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's video. Day 10 will take us to the 25th of June and we'll be able to extend that beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensemble paper to around the colour weeks. How about the CFSB2 at the end of the year? The next four weeks gets us into the first half of July. I'll get on that for you in a second. I want to thank you once again so much for all of the lovely messages you've been sending about the death of my mum, uh, which is P on the 27th of May. So it was Friday 27th of May, but, but we lost her. And since then, you've just been absolutely unbelievable, you know, with the messages, uh, uh, kindness and support that you've been sending across social media, through YouTube, emailing me. Um, it means so much. It means so much. It helps so much as we go through this very difficult period leading uh, up to the funeral. Um, you know, so it means such a lot to me. It means such a lot to my family. Thank you so much to each and every one of you for the tremendous kindness that, that you've shown and compassion and love that you showed to me and, and you know, to the family as well. The funeral's going to be on Friday, so I get very close to the funeral now. I'll be taking Friday off, uh, of course, probably take Saturday off as well. Um, so I'll disappear for, for a couple of days, you know, um, for, for the funeral. Um, and then next week, I, I think we'll start to get back. Uh, to normal, uh, of course, or as normal as they can ever be uh, for me. So, um, thank you so much. Thank you, thank, thank you so much to all of you. We are raising money for uh, British Heart Foundation in memory of Mrs. B. Um, so, if you'd like to give a donation to that, then you can find the uh, link um, in the description to to British Heart Foundation page, um, where where we're uh, where we where we're trying to raise a bit of money for them in the memory of Mrs. P. Right, thank you so much, uh, everyone, for all of the love, all of the support, all of the kindness. It means so much. Thank you so much to all of you. Right, so let's start our second temperature. We're uh, currently standing at 14.0, which is one uh, point one of a degree below average. That's provisional to uh, yesterday to the 14th of June. Looks like the first half of June is not going to be coming out too far from average. The sixth one is probably a little bit below average for the more modern averages, like 81 to 10. And also um, 91 to, to 20. Obviously, it's going to lift up over the next few days. I've got some hot weather coming. So by the weekend, I'd imagine this could be approaching 15 degrees. So then through last week and month, it's likely to drop. So I would think in the end, we're, we're probably going to come out somewhere in the 14s. But it remains to be seen. It will be interesting to see where the CT ends up by the time we get through to uh, month's end. These are the GFS upper air temperature amplification ensemble next to the of Birmingham today. So red line is the third year upper air temperature average, starting off already above average. Uh, heat spike coming up on Friday, going to be a hot day for much of central England. That heat then fades to the far south, southeast of Saturday. So it's only one day wonder on Friday, but it will become hot on Friday. Then over weekend into the next week, temperature cools down, return close to average. And those sort of average conditions, man carry on through the last uh, sort of week or so of the month. No sign of another heat spike before the end of June there. Precipitation-wise, uh, there's a lot of dry weather over next day. So it could be a fungy breakdown with this uh, cool down. There's a lot of uncertainty about that, more about that shortly. And then after that, looking rather showery, perhaps through the final week of uh, June. Temperature anomalies from the 15th, 23rd of June could be above average at England and Wales, below average at Scotland, um, so it really is in the south, but, but the heat, you know, the heat is restrictive on Friday and some degree on Saturday too. Precipitation knowledge coming out driving an average. Bear in mind there's uncertainty about fungi breakdown though at the weekend. So um, if we get a fungi breakdown then, then it will be wetter than this in the southern half of the country. Latest wind from a map from urbanoldschool.net shows high pressure is back in uh, across the country and that's sending... Uh, the jet stream and the areas of low pressure away to the northwest up here. Right, so this is how late you can make your run. It's looking for midnight like, on Saturday hot, especially in the south with plus 20 Celsius ice firm there. Much cooler both Scotland and also uh, for Northern Ireland. That's how the setup is midnight on Saturday. So a cold front pushing southwards. Uh, associated with this area of low pressure on ice and cold front pushes southwards across Scotland and Northern Ireland. But England, Wales, there'll be slack region, very hot, there's a fungi low pushing northwards out of Spain and Biscay. Now, the UK map lifts that fungi low into the country as we go through Saturday. So, this is midnight on Sunday, and we've got that fungi area of low pressure pushing into the southern half of the country. That implies a fungi breakdown is very likely for the southern 
western, southwestern parts of England and Wales in particular, because of torrential violent storms uh, with that. That thunderstorm low is still sort of away to the southwest as we get through to midnight on Monday. Again, implying that there could be more storms across southern southwestern parts of the country. Thunderstorm low then sort of fades away through the early to middle part of next week, going to slack gradient, um, which probably still is quite shower, especially so up in the north. Now, this is ICOM looking hot in the south at midnight on uh, Saturday. Midnight on Saturday, where's the fungi low? Icon does not bring that fungi low into the southern half of the country like UK Met does. Actually, the fungi low is here across central northern parts of France. So Icon implies, I think, just a cold front pushing southwards through Saturday, lowering the temperature um, and maybe bringing showers and they might be a little bit heavy, but not a classic sort of fungi breakdown. I don't think there with ICOM. By early next week, into this rather cool and showery northerly flow, and that carries on through to the middle part of next week, as far as we go by ICOM, to midday on Wednesday, where we're in a rather cool, showery northerly type wind. Uh, GFA midnight run, again, looking hot himself at midnight on Saturday, but it's midnight Sunday. Fungi low then is across France, but not making it into southern parts of England, where it's like the UK Met was showing. So not much of a fungi breakdown with the uh, GFS midnight run either. Early next week, we go into this cool, showery, northerly type flow with low pressure to the northeast of Scotland, and that carries on then up toward day 10 with winds in from the north. That big cool wind direction will be rather uh, showery, particularly for northern and eastern areas, but not much in where rainbow in the far west. Beyond that, high pressure sort of takes control of weather again as we go into the closing days of June, being drier. Warm weather back until we get to the beginning of July. As far as we go with the, with the um, GFS uh, now, it's to, be, it's to uh, be die on 1st of July. And uh, then we're back into those cooler north northeast winds uh, once again. GFS 6Z uh, looking like this. So, uh, again, there's that fungi low across this day, uh, 6 a.m. on Saturday. To get a little bit closer to the south um, as we go through Saturday into Saturday, it's 6 a.m. Sunday. So the fungi low is a little bit closer to the south, but still being held off, really, by the area uh, of uh, high pressure, most cooler northerly winds. Might affect some storms on the south coast, but probably not much further north than that. Beyond that, into the middle of the second half next week, cool, showering, northwestern winds uh, returning, which is where, which is where with that is in the north and in the northeast as well. And uh, then beyond that, into the closing days of June, high pressure comes back, turns us dry and warm, the wind pulls back into the east southeast again. Um, so, yeah, you know, closing days of June, first day of July, go into a drier and warmer scenario once more. GM uh, looks like this. So, again, we've got Fungi Low, that's across Biscay at uh, midnight on Saturday. How far north does that Fungi Low get? Um, it kind of gets like South Coast, but again, not as far north as the, uh, as the UK Met is bringing it. So that very fungi side from UK Met was a little bit isolated, I have to say, within the model out. But there might not be much thunder after this heat spike. And it might just be like a general cool down. GM then moves high pressure back in again uh, through next week. So it turns drier uh, and warm, very warm again through next week under this area of high pressure. And then the ECM WF looks like that. So what happens with the fungi low with this one? This will be on Saturday. Again, there's the fungi low. In northern France and this day that gets further north was probably bring a little bit further north than like the GFS um probably bring some storms and some uh, heavy rain into more southern southeastern parts of the country all going rather slack through the earlier part of next week uh, as well could be more downpours then still with this fungi low sort of flirting across the south and the southeast, and then through the second half of this week, high pressure, similar to GM, high pressure builds in from off the iron sea. So there is a lot of uncertainty, you know, with this, uh, with the what happens after the heat spike. We're going to get the heat spike on Friday, definitely. Um, how much in where fungi breakdown do we get through the weekend? That remains to be seen. This is a precipitation forecast from the high resolution UKV model. From uh, the weather outlook, to so just show you this. Most rain over the next few days, of course, going to be in the northwest, not much at all in the south and uh, in uh, the southeast. Into uh, the weekend, though, UKV does show some shower rain breaking out, maybe thunderstorms there uh, as we get into Saturday evening, for example, across central England. And then it's really um, early sunny, but those storms and maybe long spells of thundery rain become very widespread then. Particularly through like the Midlands, Central, Southern England, Wales, Southwestern England too, 
and uh, we keep those thundery showers going through Sunday and into Monday in the southern half of the country. This is the temperature forecast over the next few days. So today going to be warm, temperature to be 20 Celsius. Tomorrow will be uh, warmer still. Temperature could be approaching 30 degrees in the southeast corner. Tomorrow afternoon, that's 86 in Fahrenheit. But it's really Friday, but it's very, very hot. Look at this once again. The uh, GFS, the, I'm going to talk about the UKV model, high risk UKV. Get the temperatures across uh, the Midlands, Central, Southern, Southeastern England to be in the low to mid 30 Celsius on Friday afternoon. So 32, 35 degrees there being forecast. That's like 90, 95 Fahrenheit. 36 is possible. Uh, some like Heathrow, wouldn't rule it out. 36 is about 97 in Fahrenheit. Would be a new June record if that came up. Much cooler away to the northwest. So you notice the heat is very much restricted to the south and south. <coughs> Excuse me. To the south and southeastern. Of course, still pretty hot in the extreme south. On Saturday, still with temperatures around 30 degrees there. Um, but notice Wales and Midlands, the temperatures have plummeted down into the mid-teens Celsius at best. Um, so very dramatic cool, <laughs> cool down after that heat spike on, uh, on um, Friday. And then uh, uh, into Sunday, like it is warm soon in the south south east temperature in the mid-20s, but nothing like as excessive as is on Friday. And, and never get particularly warm up in the north either. This is a precipitation forecast based on the ECM run from Tometeo.com. Again, most of the precipitation will be in the northwest until we get into the this Saturday. Where we've got heavy outbreaks of rain, maybe with thunder company across parts of England and uh, Wales too. There are some real downpours in there um, if the ECM is right. Uh, that goes on to Sunday before fading out. And then early next week, Further showery bursts uh, until it turns drier under the area of high pressure. These are the options on the table within the East Zone on day 4, day 10. That's the 25th of June from the Icelandic Met Office. 18 members of ECM ensembles with low pressure to the north and a ridge to the south that brings the wind in the westerly direction. Rather showery, especially so in the northern half of the country. Another 18 with a mid Atlantic ridge, a trough of low in the North Sea that pulls the wind in. From a northerly direction, that's cool and showery. Then 15, including the operation run, has high pressure ridging in from off the Atlantic into West of Europe. That's the driest, warmest option. But it does appear that the uh, that ECM operation run, which turns dry and warm uh, later next week, does appear that's a little bit isolated. Actually, the cooler, more showery scenarios, the 18 mare and the 18 mare, you know, that is by far the, the more likely outcome, actually, uh, for around day 10. And two in time, these are the options I've got. Gets us to the final day of the month, 30th of June. Uh, 17 members of East Elms on them with high pressure to our west and southwest, bringing in like a westerly type flow. 12 with low pressure over top of coast. That can be very unsettled. 11 with high pressure ridging in from off Atlantic into West Europe. That can be the, uh, the driest option, probably. And another 11 here with lower pressure around uh, Iceland. And that could be a little bit. On the cool and showery side. Finally, we see FFB2. It's a 500 millibar height and on. It's broken down into week periods. The first week period will take us from the 14th to the 20th of June. The coming week will have high pressure over and to the west of the country, reaching in, bringing a lot of dry uh, weather with it. Into week two, which is going to be the 23rd, 27th of June. High pressure is pulled out to our west. Low pressure is to our east and south. Winds will be coming around the high pressure from a northwesterly direction. So coolest, uh, coolest and most showery in the east, dry some in the west. Week three, gonna be the 28th of June to 4th of July. High pressure then is in over the top of the country. That will turn dry and warm for the opening days of July. The high pressure still around into week four as well. It's a fifth to be 11th of July, suggesting a lot of dry, warm, maybe quite hot weather through uh, the uh, first half of July. All a long way off, all very spectacular, so I have to wait and see. But looks like high pressure will be back in business if ever really goes away um, by the time we get into July. 
Okay, so uh, we've done. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. And just say, um, please, uh, like, share, subscribe on videos. And don't forget to tell friends about Gals Weather as well. Get them to subscribe. We're on the grind to 14,000 subscribers. And so me very quickly with Glastonbury updates over the last uh, week or two. So thank you so much, everybody, for subbing. And, uh, and let's see if we can keep it going and get to 14K as quickly as we possibly can. Right, so tomorrow, uh, you're having a 10 to 14 day, uh, and I think the fourth update for Glastonbury. I may be having a break, of course, for Friday, probably for Saturday uh, as well. It's going to be, you know, a very sad day for me on uh, Friday, so I'll probably need Saturday to uh, to recover and, and whatnot. We'll see. But, um, yeah, a little bit of a break coming up. Uh, but videos, there will be a couple of videos uh, ahead tomorrow. You enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. And for this one, though, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.